डॉक्टर पी के देव चेयरमैन रिसेप्शन साइंटिफिक कमेटी प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर शांतनु गुह प्रेसिडेंट सी एस आई ओस्ट बेंगल ब्रांच एंड पास प्रेसिडेंट सी एस आई ऑल इंडिया चेयरमैन ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी डॉक्टर अमल कुमार बैनर्जी चीफ कोऑर्डिनेटर सैट इज द पास प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ सी एस आई ऑल्सो द पास प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ ए पी आई ऑल इंडिया Okay, okay. Now, may I request uh, our guest of honor, our chief guest, Shami Atmobhanandiji, to come on the st stage. Shami Atmobhanandiji, at present, is the Vice Chancellor of Ramakrishna Mission, Vivekananda University. Now, Maharaj, basically, is the Professor of Physics in IIT Madras. He was Doctor of Science in particle physics and he joined Ramakrishna Mission at the 1978. Then he was vice principal of Ramakrishna Mission Vidya Mundi for 25 years. Then Maharaj become principal of Ramakrishna Mission Vidya Mundi for 19 years and he was a, our teacher. And then he become prince, then the vice chancellor of Ramakrishna Mission Vivekananda uh, University. Maharaj uh, is basically teaching throughout the world regarding the teachings of Swami Vivekananda regarding the of uh, his education and upbringing of the young. He is working on the different religious among the different religions. He is teaching the yoga throughout the world. Yoga as taught by Swamiji and our Gita and the lessons from Upanishad. Maharaj is uh, delivered the different lectures throughout the globe. He has lectured regarding yoga in Italy in 2009. Maharaj has delivered lecture in New York uh, 2012 regarding the, not about the GDP, but the, our uh, mental health at the national well-being. And he's also speaking in Melbourne regarding the freedom of, uh, for the role of religious re uh, leaders in different religion. So please welcome Maharaj Shami, Atpavindranji Maharaj. Now may I request Dr. Dhiman Kahali to come on the stage, Chief Advisor. May I request now Dr. Shukru Banerji, Secretary of West Bengal Branch. Now may I request to come Dr. Shuni Banerji, Chairman, Scientific Committee. Now may I request Dr. Shomit Roy, Organizing Secretary, and Dr. P.K. Dev, Chairman Reception Committee. Uh, please present the bouquet to all the dignitaries. May I request uh, the bouquet to be given to our ch chief guest, Shamami Atma Priyanandaji. And we have got some <laughs> to our chief coordinator, Dr. Amul Kumar Banerjee, or the president CSI West Bengal, Dr. Shantanu Guho, secretary West Bengal branch, Dr. Shubhra Banerjee, Chief Advisory Icon, Dr. Dhiman Kahali, Scientific Chairman, Dr. Shuni Banerjee, and, and myself, Organizing Shumitra. Secretary, Dr. Shomitra Roy. Thank you. Uh, may I request to present a small token gift to our chief guest?
Now may I request all the dignitaries to come for lamp lighting, our auspicious ceremony. Please come. I request President CSI West Bengal Branch and Chairman Organizing Committee, Dr. Shantanu Guho, to give his address, please. Honorable Chief Guest, Shami. Atma Priyananda Ji, honorable dignitaries on the dais and of the dais and dear colleagues. This is perhaps the eighth, ninth year we are having this program, EII Con, or the Eastern India Interventional Con Cardiology Conclave. First, it occurred nine years back and we thought of having a regional program of Eastern India. We are trying to maintain that, but somehow it has become a program of West Bengal branch of the Cardiological Society of India. Only once it went to Patna. Uh, I don't remember the year exactly. We are very proud and honored to have Samiji here as, an, as our chief guest and we are all waiting to hear from him his views about, I don't know exactly what he will be talking about, but he is one of the finest speakers I have ever heard. So without wasting much time, I welcome you all to this conclave and thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Goho. Now, may I request our Chief Coordinator, Dr. Amul Kumar Banerjee, to say a few words to the audience. Good evening. <coughs> Swami Atupti Anandu, Vice Chancellor of Ramkishna Mission, Vyakananda University, respected <coughs> dignitaries on the dais, my friends and colleagues. First, we had our Eastern India Intervention and Cardiology Conclave in the year 2009. Actually, we got this impetus when we had our first mid-term National Intervention Council meet in 2008 in Calcutta. At that time, we thought in Eastern India, we should have 
some exclusive program on interventional cardiology, rather catheter-based cardiovascular intervention. In our part, for sharing of our knowledge, to showcase that we are not inferior to any, or compared to any other part of our country, and also to give a good scientific platform for our young budding cardiologist to learn the basics. Truly this year, Eastern India Cardiology Conclave, Intervention Cardiology Conclave, we had our neighboring country from Eastern India, Bangladesh, we had two live transmission and we had at least two figure delegates from Bangladesh. We also have faculty and delegates from Northeast states, Bihar, Jharkhand, and Odisha. I hope under the stewardship of Shomitra Roy as the organizing secretary and Dr. Suni Banerjee, who is the scientific chairperson, we had a academy, we like to have a very uh, good academic feast, I hope this conference will have a memorable, <coughs> it, it would be a memorable event. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Banerjee, for your kind words. Now, may I request our Chief Guest, Shami Atmopi Anandaji, to release the souvenir, please. Thank you. Uh, this time, we did not keep any entertainment program after the inauguration with the deliberate knowledge that our chief guest's lecture will be the best kind of entertainment that you can have. So may I request our chief guest, Shami Atmopi Anandaji, to give his thoughts for us. Uh, Maharaj has uh, requested the people who are sitting on the back, please come on the front. Shabai Shamne Chule Ashun. So, may we begin with the usual customary uh, traditional chant, which is called the Shanti Mantra in Sanskrit. It is a universal <coughs> peace chant from the Upanishad. Om Bhadram Karne Bhisranuyama Devaha Bhadram Pashe Maksha Bhirya Jatraha Sthirai Rangai Istushtuvagum Sastanu Bhihi Yashema Deva Hitai Yadayuhu Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Tat Sat I am very delighted to be here this evening. I am privileged as well as humbled because I know very little about how the heart functions except that is a heart which is pumping now. Otherwise I wouldn't be here. So I thank all the dignitaries in the dais, those who are organizing this event, for calling me because I entertain as well as to educate. <laughs> See, all of you are deeply interested in how the heart is functioning and how the heart can function better. <clears throat> I asked Dr. Roy, what should I speak on? He said, you know best. Then I was remembering an interesting joke. Two boys were quarreling. One boy said, my mother is much greater. She is an excellent speaker. <coughs> 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 
what is the uniqueness? She can speak on any subject at any time. The other boy said, what is so great about it? My mom can speak even when there is no subject. So that's what now I am going to do. What I am going to speak on, I myself do not know. But as, I, as we go along, the subject will flower. So I always tell myself, the most important task of a speaker is to keep the audience awake. Because in an air-conditioned hall, when there is so, so much heat outside, humidity, if I go on and on in a drooling tone, then the possibility of most people dozing off is quite high. <clears throat> One second, I'm remembering a joke. A father, Christian father, was giving a mass on Sundays. <coughs> An old lady used to come with a small kid, a grandson, and every time she used to doze off. The lecture was so boring. One day the father get, got furious. He told the kid, Wake up your grandma. Every time she is going to sleep, the boy was so innocent. She got, she got up and said, Father, you put her to sleep. Why should I wake her up? Now, the subject today is the heart. How the heart can function, how it can be healthy. <clears throat> you know about the physical heart, which most of you deal with. In our scriptures, every entity is supposed to have three dimensions. This is a very interesting idea which our Rishi has developed. One is the physical dimension. Let us take the example of a sun. Sun is Surya. What is the sun? The physicist, an astrophysicist, a scientist would say sun is a blaze of fire. It gives you heat, it gives you light. And the mechanism by which it gives you light and heat, energy, is called the nuclear fusion. Those who are, know the source of solar energy, Hans Bethe, the famous Nobel laureate, who discovered the source of solar energy is nuclear fusion. When hydrogen nuclei, which is just a proton, they fuse together to form helium nucleus, then a lot of energy is released, and this energy is what constitutes the solar energy, the stellar energy. There is the physical sun. In Sanskrit it is called Adhi Bhautika Surya. Adhi Bhautika. Bhautika means physical. <coughs> relating to the physical dimension. There is a different dimension to this Surya, which is, you are amazed that this Surya is giving you so much of energy and light. You are grateful to it. And I used to tell my students, calculate the amount of energy the sun is giving per month. And divide it with the number of units of electricity which we are normally used to. And find out how much is the charge you have to pay to the sun for giving you so much of electricity. If the sun charged you for the energy that it is giving, then the entire wealth of the whole of the earth will not be sufficient to repay what the sun is giving us in a month. That is the power of the sun. So you feel grateful to the sun, and when you open the window, you see the sun blazing, it is a disinfectant, and it gives you also a lot of vitamins. The evening sun is so rich in D vitamin, so you don't have to go and eat vitamin tablets, you expose yourself to the sun. And the modern civilization is such that we cut out all sunlight, close all doors and put on the air conditioning. Once Dr. Devi Shitty, the famous cardiologist, one told us in a seminar, a large percentage of the infections in hospitals comes from air conditioning. 
that the modern civilization, we don't look, want to look at the sun. But when you look at it and admire that the sun is giving us so much of light and so much of heat, you feel a kind of gratefulness coming within you and you call it a kind of a god. God in the sense that it is directly perceivable by the senses and it gives you so much of energy. So you call it Adi Daivika, Sun God, Surya Devata. You worship it. Humanity all over the world, all religions have eulogized the sun because it gives you so much of energy. It's possible that for agriculture, for everything, you need the sunlight. There's a third dimension to this, which is how is this sun related to me? This is a very important thinking in the Indian spiritual culture. The entire world outside exists in relation to me. How I am related to this world and how I react to this world. My relationship with this entire universe is vital to my life on this earth how we can live peacefully with the environment. Now, so much of talk these days on environment, climate change, global warming and so on, how I am related to the environment and all that exists around me is vitally important for me to be able to live happily in coordination and cooperation with the entire environment. This has been talked about long back, ages ago, thousands of years ago in India, how I can live happily in cooperation with the environment and not exploit nature. Nature is giving so much to human beings. As Mahatma Gandhi famously said, nature is so much for man's need, but not much for man's greed. Human beings are so greedy and they want to exploit nature. And the Greek philosophers of a theory of nemesis, nemesis of nature, what we call prakriti pratishod. If you exploit nature, nature comes back and gives you a tight slap on your cheeks and asks you to behave. So giving back to nature what we have received is a fundamental principle behind living peacefully with the environment. And therefore, we look at the sun. We have talked about two dimensions of the sun, Adi Bhautika and Adi Daivika. The third is how I am related to the sun. That's called Adhyatmika. What is happening within me? So every entity in this universe has three dimensions according to our ancient thinking. The Adi Bhautika, the Adi Daivika and Adhyatmika. Now let us come to the heart, which is the subject today. When you think of the heart, you can think of it as the Adi Bhautika heart, which all of your cardiologists are dealing with. You have a bypass surgery, you find out how the heart is functioning. What is wrong with the heart? You have measurements of the heart. All this is Adi Bhautika heart. The another dimension of the heart is Adi Daivika, which the ancients called the spiritual heart. Apart from the physical heart that you have, you have one more heart which is an emotional heart, which is actually the play of prana. Prana is the vital energy. Hardik Abhinandan, that's a standard phrase which we use. Heartfelt thanks. Which is the heart you are talking about? Is it the physical heart? No. Your heart may be damaged, but still you can have Hardik Abhinandan because the different heart is functioning. That second heart is called the emotional heart. The pranic heart, which pumps blood, not only purifies and pumps blood, but that heart is associated with a lot of emotions, feeling, love, compassion, pity, even anger, sensitivity, 
alienation depression all these are associated with the emotional heart when you go through shocks in life when you are deeply stressed suddenly your blood pressure very fluctuates that shows there is a deep connection between the body the physical heart which is the adi bhautika heart and the emotional heart and the emotional heart is the adhyatmika heart which is the pranic heart which makes life sweet and possible because a human being needs love needs to give affection to people should be unselfish altruistic all these various emotions good and bad all of them emerge from a different kind of a heart which we call the emotional heart ancient indian wisdom talks about a third kind of heart which is called the spiritual heart and saints and sages even in the modern times bhagwan ramana maharshi for example in the southern part of india he used to say that the phys- the emotional the, the the spiritual heart is to the right all of us know the heart is to the left but the spiritual heart they say is to the right that is the source of the sense of i when i say i i always thump for my the right part of my chest i did this you don't say i did this even people who use the left hand always use the right hand to say i so the spiritual heart is the source of i the sense of egoism and that spiritual heart is the seat of a higher intuitive understanding buddhi what we call intelligence doesn't emanate from the brain but rather it emanates from the spiritual heart what we call the mind we do not know where exactly the mind is located but the mind seems to be located everywhere in the body according as you choose to locate it there the mind could be in the brain the mind could be in the legs when you feel terrible pain in the leg the mind is in the leg now the intelligence that you talk about buddhi emanates from the spiritual heart and the bhagavad gita has a beautiful sentence in the 8th chapter mano hridi niruddhya the mind has to be held tight and arrested into the heart when the mind and heart work in unison then extraordinary discoveries are made that what we call intuitive faculty in sanskrit we have so many words called medha pragna dhi the gayatri mantra talks about dhiyo yo na prachodayat dhi is the singular dhya is the plural so the dhi is the faculty of higher intuition which emanates from the spiritual heart which spontaneously reveals to you certain truths about yourself and the universe as doctors all of you also might know there are certain peculiar cases you do not exactly know you follow the protocol but even then there's some hitch there you can't really solve suddenly it occurs to you occurs to you that you should follow this kind of a method so that sudden revelation which comes to you comes from the spiritual heart so when the heart is purified that's why in the ancient india hridaya is given an important place it is not the physical heart the adi bhautika heart it is not the emotional heart but it is the spiritual heart which is the seat of higher intuition and the seat of what we call the paramatma the higher self in man which is beyond this physical organic self which we call consciousness there was a time when neuroscientists used to frown at this word consciousness now consciousness has been accepted and people have realized consciousness and the brain are not the same once upon a time they used to say consciousness is actually an epiphenomenon of the brain due to certain chemical reactions now they have realized that the brain is only a field in which consciousness manifests there is a higher kind of consciousness we call chaitanya which is not prana life in the western thought 
Life and consciousness are mixed up. In Eastern wisdom, Indian wisdom, there is a consciousness, Chaitanya, which is apart from the life itself, the prana. What is the hallmark of consciousness, which is the heart? Self-awareness. I am talking to you, there is an act which I do. You are listening to me, there is an action which is going on now. My talking and you listening. Now, you may say, I listen to the talk, but can you assert, I am aware that I am listening to the talk. To do something and to be aware that you are doing something are just two different things. Human beings alone have this capacity to be self-aware. I am doing something, I am speaking, I am moving, I am eating. But at the same time I can say, I am aware that I am moving, I am aware that I am talking, I am aware that I am eating. I am doing so many things. The capacity to be able to be aware of what you are doing is called the self-awareness. And the self-awareness is the hallmark of what you call consciousness. And that emanates from the heart. So heart is a peculiar uh, organ in the human body which is at the time, at, at once physical, as Adi Bhautik, emotional, as the seat of all emotions and fine feelings. But there is a higher dimension of the heart which was discovered by the Rishis called the spiritual heart. And the mind when it merges in the heart, you spontaneously come up with certain higher intuitive discoveries which the brain cannot do. Most of the scientific discoveries have been discovered through the heart rather than through the brain. Brain logically formulates the whole thing later on, but the heart comes first and intuitively knows this is it. You, can, you, you must have felt it in your own daily life. I'll give you a very simple example. All of us have heard about Srinivas Ramanujan, the famous mathematical genius of India. He used to write down so many theorems in his notebook. His mentor, Professor Hardy, used to ask him, Ramanujan, how do you come up with these theorems? Who tells you all this? Ramanujan used to say, Sir, I know they are right. What is the proof of these theorems? So proof? I know. See that these are right. Who tells you? I, I feel in my heart of hearts that these are right. This common expression in, Indi, in, in English, in the heart of hearts, that means there is a heart within the heart, the core of your being you feel from within, this is true, this is correct. Who tells you? Your heart tells you from within. Then hardly pushed him a little farther. He said, how do you write down these theorems? Who reveals it to you? He says, sir, I worship a goddess, Devi. But the place in which I was born, in the place in Tamil Nadu, Namakkal was the place. The Namagiri goddess comes and tells me, so I write down in a vision. Then Hardy said, this boy is a mathematical genius, but hopelessly religious. There are certain things above the intellect which come to you through the certain revelations. And a person who works through the heart, keeping the mind merged in the spiritual heart, is the most successful person. You may be a brilliant person, you may have a very sharp brain, but a sharp brain without an expansive heart and a heart which encompasses the whole universe in a, an embrace of love, is much more successful. Ravindranath very famously said in the book called The Stray Birds in English, Konika in Bengali, he said, a mind which is all logic is like a sword which is all blade. It makes the hand bleed that uses it. If you are so sharp that you can't be handled, you make everybody bleed. A mind is extremely sharp and logical, sticks at every point, does not move at all. Only that kind of a brain or a mind, an intellect, which 
is held in the heart which is spiritual, which is expansive and which holds the whole world in its embrace alone can be successful. Therefore, the heart which is the higher intuition called Hridaya is considered so important in the spiritual life of Indian culture. We talk about Hridaya Kamala, we talk about the God residing in the heart, Ishwara Sarvabhutanam, Hridyeshe Arjuna Tishthati, Brahmayan Sarvabhutani, Yantra Rudhani Mayaya, Bhagavad Gita, last chapter. O Arjuna, the Lord is residing in the heart of all beings and then from within the heart, He is impelling everybody to do what they are doing. He is the inner impeller, inner controller, inner regulator called the Antaryami. The Upanishads also say, the Supreme Atman resides in the heart. Shatam chaikaja hridayas chanadyaha tasam murdhana bhavinisrudaika the Gattopanishad. So the heart is considered a very important place and therefore very often whenever you are agitated, when you are terribly disturbed, a simple by method, method meditation has been taught to us. Simply touch the heart for some time and watch your breaths and calm down. If you touch your heart, your emotions flow and your spiritual forces are also activated. And therefore, I just leave this thought with you, how you can chasten your brain through purity of understanding and a chastened mind how it can be held in the spiritual heart so that a higher intuitive faculty can develop in you and all that you do will become right. Intuitive faculty is what makes you take decisions. The mind cannot take decisions. Mind vacillates from do's and don'ts. We call it sankalpa vikalpa. To be or not to be, that is the question. That is what the mind does. But there is a higher intuitive faculty which says, decisive faculty, I shall do this, I shall not do this. This higher decisive faculty, one decision of your life will completely change your life. One decision of the man at the top, a leader, will change the course of history of the whole country or the whole state. And therefore, it is extremely important we develop the higher intuitive faculty, which is not the spiritual heart, and the chastened brain and the intellect, which is held in this heart, through which will flow in thousand streams, compassion, love, and universal acceptance. In this world which is so full of conflicts, conflict-ridden, strife-torn, and constantly we are panicking. We have everything in the world, but we do not have peace. We can't sleep peacefully, we can't love one another. That will come not through the brain, through the manipulation and the maneuvering of this cunning brain in which human beings are accustomed to, but Developing a chastened and purified brain, mind and holding it in the spiritual heart and in thousand channels flows the universal love through which you embrace the whole of mankind. Then you will realize what is meant by unselfishness. All of you doctors know how important it is for doctors to develop selflessness. You have no private time of your own. You can't say, I can't do this now. You are bound by the oaths which you have taken that you shall attend to anybody in distress any time of the day. How is it possible? You have your own time, you have your own energy and you have your own agenda. But even then, how is it possible for you to feel? It is not mere feeling. Mere feeling will not do. Commercialization, of course, will kill the whole job. It comes through a higher intuition and a fresh energy will flow through you the universal energy will flow through your heart by which you will feel you can never become tired. Because universal energy is flowing through you and that energy uses your heart as a channel through which it will work out what is good for humanity. These are just a few thoughts which I am leaving with you. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. We have to walk out on these thoughts over the next few months. 
because we have to slowly digest it. Thank you. Uh, may I uh, request our Chief Advisor, Dr. Dhiman Kahali, to advise again on how to go about our program further. Uh, respected Maharaj Atopiyanandaji, respected dignitaries and distinguished guests over the dais and also in front of me, including the international faculty and from Bangladesh, from USA, we are really very grateful to you and also to you, the audience who have been assembled here since 9 a.m. in the morning and also tomorrow for successfully organizing the 9th AI con conference very, very successfully. I also give thanks to Dr. Shuni Banerjee and Dr. Shomitra Rai for beautifully arranging this conference under the guidance of Dr. Amul Kumar Banerjee, Dr. P.K. Dev, and Dr. Shantanu Guho. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for organizing such a beautiful conference, and we hope that every year we'll be organizing this conference in a successful way for the betterment of the humanity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kahali. Now may I request our Secretary, West Bengal branch, Dr. Shubhra Banerjee, to share his thoughts with us. Respected dignitaries, on and off the dais, friends and colleagues. As the Secretary of West Bengal branch of CSI, it's my honor and privilege to welcome you all to ICON 2017. As we have already heard that the ICON was initially designed to provide a platform for the interventional cardiologists of Eastern India where they could share their thoughts and views and showcase their achievements and, uh, and their activities. However, very soon, it acquired a national dimension, and that's thanks to many of the dignitaries present on the dais whose tireless efforts made it possible. A lot of hard work has gone into the making of this program, and I would like sincerely to thank the organizing committee, and especially the organizing secretary, Dr. Shomitra Rai, and the scientific committee chairman, Dr. Shunip Banerjee, whose endeavor made this possible. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Dr. Banerjee. Now it's my great pleasure to invite Dr. Shunip Banerjee, the scientific committee chairman, after a so far very successful scientific program. What the second heart of mine, according to Maharaja, uh, says that all of us should attend 9 o'clock in the morning <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> and we should enjoy the feast and uh, probably I'll just uh, try to recapitulate what Maharaj says that actually when we think that we are tired, we are not tired, we have a lot of energy. So we have to prepare for the next day. Next day is a holiday, even we have to go for our work from Monday. And we have to May I invite myself to give the vote of thanks. Thank you, our chief guest, Shami Atmopriyanandaji, for sharing his valuable time and a few hours with us. It's our great privilege and honor, Maharaj. I thank you sincerely on behalf of the organizing committee and the CSA West Bengal branch. I thank all the members of the organizing committee of the EICON 2017, especially headed by Dr. Amal Kumar Banerjee, Dr. P.K. Dev, and Dr. Shantanu Guho in their respective positions and capacities. I thank all the members of the CSI West Bengal branch for actively participating and giving me all the impetus to make this conference possible. I thank the international and national dignitaries and faculty for joining with us and make it a successful program. I thank very much 
for the industry personnel without whose support we couldn't have made a conference of this stature possible. I thank our event management team, our audio visual team and the JW Marriott hotel team. If there is any deficiency in their parts or our part, please give constructive criticism so that we can improve in short term for tomorrow and in long term for our next conference. If I fail or forget to thank anybody who matters, my sincere apology. Now I declare the end of the inauguration program and beginning of our banquet. Please stay with us. Thank you.